guys, it's V. Um, it's probably about 1.30 in the morning, and I can't sleep, so I just thought I'd uh, get some stuff off of my brain. Um, hopefully this won't turn into too much of a, a rant. I don't try to make it a habit to do those, but uh, every now and then you just need to talk something out. And uh, I, I don't even know if we'll even post this, but um, sometimes I think I just need to get things out of my brain. <laughs> but um, as some of you may or may not have noticed the last couple of videos, I keep trying to talk my way through what some of the IVF requires, which is, of course, injections. And I keep saying, uh, you know what, I got this, it's not a big deal. How many women in the world have had to do this before? Um, it's, it's, it's just for, you know, a handful of weeks. I'll get through it. The end result is worth it. Started calling them things other than needles, like uh, magic baby making wands. <laughs> um... Anything to get my mind off of them. And, uh, really I've been fooling myself. It, it, it really hasn't worked. Um, yeah, I think I have time to get used to the idea because the injections that come at first uh, are subcutaneous. You can do those either in your tummy or your upper outside thighs. There's also a spot on your arms you could do them. And they're they're smaller needles. They're, they're really nothing that scares me. Um, and I can do those myself. Not a big deal. Um, I have a couple of weeks, maybe three weeks, until I start have to dealing with the Big needles, I think, at least. I know the progesterone and the delostrogen and the trigger shot are all the larger needles. So all of those come after the Lupron, or the beginnings of the Lupron, which is where I'm at now. And after I uh, get amp flow, um, after that point I'm not positive, but I, I think I think at that point then it's just the Follistim and the Lupron. And then once we get to the point of the egg retrieval, then that brings on the trigger shot, which is the start of the larger needles, which are not subcutaneous. Those are intramuscular and have to be essentially done in your butt um, or your upper butt area. Let's put it that way. <laughs> So, I think if I'm understanding all of this correctly, I have a little while longer to get used to those. But, I gotta admit, I freaked out last night. <laughs> I freaked out on my husband, actually. Um, now, if you've watched my videos, I mentioned in the last one that his right hand is immobilized for the next five weeks now. We're at about another five weeks. <laughs> and his right hand is his primary hand. So I'm sure if you use your imagination you'll know that that's going to cause a couple of issues with IVF, most of which are not a big deal. Um, but I can't do the intramuscular shots myself. You can't really do that properly. <laughs> um, especially if you don't want to hurt yourself. And I'm not particularly fond of the possibility of having to ask someone other than my husband to help me with them. I Now, don't get me wrong, I've had numerous people tell me that they would help. Um, getting someone to do it is not an issue. Um, and, and one person actually has worked with doctors and was a nurse that doesn't live that far from me at all. So that that's that's 
not an issue. It's it's more a, a mental issue with me. I really don't want anyone else to do that other than my husband. Um, and really, I don't want anybody to have to do it except me. But since I can't, my husband is fine. <laughs> um, but, you know, he's not entirely positive he's going to be able to do that. Now, he's got... A couple of weeks, a handful of weeks to get his hand in a little bit better condition. But, you know, he's still not supposed to be using his thumb. So, best case scenario, he'll be able to use his right hand, which is immobilized up to here, to maybe be able to, maybe be able to do the shot. And of course, to do the shot without hurting a person worse than it already might, it's supposed to be kind of done like a dart. It's supposed to be quick. You don't want to put the needle in slowly because my nurse quite literally said that if he did that, I would punch him out. That kind of scared me. <laughs> um, so if he figures out a way to do that with the immobilized hand because he doesn't trust himself to do it with his non-primary hand. He's not, uh, what's the word, ambidextrous. <laughs> um, he wouldn't be able to push the medicine in with his thumb. He'd have to use his other hand to push the plunger of the syringe in. Again, that's not a big deal, but we're not positive he's going to be able to do that. And it just, it freaks me out. I can't really explain it. Um, those larger needles really freak me out as it is. I, I can't explain to you why they just do. They look awfully scary. I've had numerous people tell me it's not a big deal. They're sharp. Yeah, they suck, but you know, it's, 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 you'll be all right. And, and I, maybe I will be. Maybe I'm freaking out for no apparent reason. But, um, you know, my husband knew something was wrong. <clears throat> it, it's kind of been weighing on my brain, even though I've been trying to manipulate myself into feeling okay. It kind of all came to a head last night. I freaked out on him and whatnot. And uh, he admitted that, you know, he hates the fact that I have to take all these shots. In his mind, he thinks it's his fault, um, which I don't believe. I, and really, it's, it's, it's nobody's fault here. This is, this, this is, we're a pair. We're in this together. I'm not that kind of person, and he's not that kind of person. This this is nobody's fault. This is us, all right? But in the back of his mind, he seems to think it's the issues on his end that are causing the majority of the problem. Um, again, I don't believe that. Um, so he feels bad that I've got to go through having all these injections. And, of course, he said, you know, just like you just like me. He's saying, I, I want, I would love to at least try IVF once, but if you don't think you can do these injections, I understand, we'll move straight to adoption. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Don't misunderstand me. I need to try this for myself also, um, as well as for us. I can't deal with another thing in my life that is or would be another what if, another unknown that I could prevent. You, I, I don't want that in my head that, you know, what if we did try. And, and I'm not going to get into my explanation about um, what I mean by another thing in my life. Just know that there are others. Um, so... He, you know, he promised he would try to be able to do the injections for me. But I can't hold that against him if he can't. It's not his fault. We decided as a couple to have him do this surgery at the beginning of the year. We had no idea that it was going to line up so closely with the IVF. We didn't know when the IVF was going to start. We didn't know when his surgery was going to be. It all kind of got decided very quickly. Um, his surgery as well. I mean, he went to go see a um, doctor about that, and they decided immediately that everything had already been tried that could be tried. It was time to move on to the surgery, 
and flat out told him, hey, you know what, well, I think that was a Friday. I think it was on a Friday that he had that doctor appointment, and they said the hospital would be calling you on Monday and letting you know when the surgery is, and it turned out to be the following Monday. So that moved very quickly, completely out of our control. Same thing with the IVF. We had no idea what was going to happen with my cysts, if they were going to clear up, and if they did, how soon we would be jumping into this. There was no way to know that this would have turned out this way. So, <clears throat> I'm sorry if this seems rambly. I guess I'm trying to talk my way through this needle thing yet again. It's, it's you know, I find it really strange that it bothers me at all. Um, I put some jokes about it in my last video um, I, to try and make light of the subject, but uh, it's all still in the back of my brain. It, uh, it, well, I'm more in the front of my brain now because if it was in the back of my brain, maybe I could ignore it. But um, you would think that the needles wouldn't bother me. Yeah, I have tattoos. Those needles aren't the same thing. And they don't go in as deep. Um, those, what are they, one and a half inch needles for the progesterone and the delestrogen del and the Novaril, um, those have to go all the way in. Um, so there's really no comparison there. A lot of people joke around about that kind of thing. Oh, you got tattoos, what's the big deal? It's not the same thing, I'm telling you. <laughs> it's not. Uh, not to say that tattoos aren't painful. Um, anybody that says that, you know, it tickled having a tattoo is lying to you. <laughs> but, um, of course, certain areas of the body feel worse than others. Um, and, you know, I've had shots. I've had blood drawn. Just like all of us, <laughs> we should all be used to needles by now, by the time we get to this point, right? Um, but you see those things, and... They don't look very thin to me either. I know. I know. I'm told. Oh, they're you know they're thin. They're sharp. They're not going to tear the tissue. It's it it it'll probably feel uncomfortable. You're probably going to bruise. Make sure you ice it. Make sure you massage it. Make sure you use the heating pad, but don't use the heating pad after your transfer. And I really appreciate all of that because <laughs> maybe all that information will definitely help me get through this, but I'm not going to lie, those larger needles are really freaking me out. And I'm kind of hoping that I don't end up with... needle fear crossover. <laughs> I've already said that I don't think the smaller needles are going to bother me. Um, but it's not like I've ever had a need to inject myself with anything. I don't think those smaller needles are that big of a deal because I've had allergy testing done with similar needles. I, I think the blood draw needles kind of feel similar. And I've had allergy shots. Though the allergy shots, I think, are the larger needles. They go here, and most people have a lot of padding here. <laughs> um, it's other people giving me those shots, which kind of goes against what I said about the progesterone, that it, it freaks me out that someone else has to give me those shots, maybe because of where it goes. It goes in your backside. Um, I don't know. But I just got off the subject there, or, or, or off what I was talking about. But I think my point is, is I'm hoping that the smaller needles won't freak me out. I guess I'll find out um, tomorrow night. Uh, having that in my hand, and you have to pinch your skin in the belly and to just inject a needle into yourself is a little foreign to me. <laughs> I'm sure I'm going to have to take a deep breath and my heart rate's probably going to go up, but I still think those will be okay. The larger needles just... 
I just can't get around those. I can't quite convince myself that they'll be okay. Of course, if all of this works, if all of this works, it'll all be worth it. Absolutely. But that doesn't mean I'm any less freaked out. <laughs> um, and I probably should mention that all of this is kind of a catch-22. I, I, I don't... If someone else has to give me the intramuscular injections, the larger ones, um, yes, I would prefer it be my husband. But at the same time, I know what his issues are, other than the obvious with his hand. Um, his issues are the concept of causing me pain directly. He thinks might make him a little bit lightheaded. <laughs> and I can completely understand that. Um, so I don't know how this is going to go. I, I don't. I don't know how this is going to go. <sighs> and now I'm rambling. So, that's that. I am... My name is Fee, and I am afraid of intermuscular needles. There, I said it. <laughs> and I have to get over it, right? I have to get over it. Got to do this thing. All right, so now I got that out. And now I feel better. And maybe I'll be okay. I don't know. <laughs> maybe I'll be okay. Um, I still have some time before I have to deal with those. All right, that's it. That that's that that's that's enough of uh, what should I call this? Confessions of a late night fee. All right, talk to you guys later. Bye.